Today, I have Craig Cummins with me. Craig is the regional sales manager for Anderson Hauser. He's been with Anderson Hauser for 13 years. He's been in the business for over 35 years. And uh, Craig, uh, welcome to my podcast today. Thanks, Bill. Appreciate you inviting me. We're here to talk today about uh, STEAM, right? We are here to talk today about STEAM. So Craig and I were brainstorming and saying, hey, you know, let's do a little series of did you knows. And he said, hey, I got a lot of experience with STEAM. I'd love to talk about STEAM. So Craig's going to talk about STEAM, how to measure STEAM, the challenges involved with STEAM, and uh, we're just going to roll with STEAM today. So Craig, take go, go, <laughs> end off. Thank you, Bill. Um, yeah, so I wanted to start from the perspective of not so much talking about an, an actual Anderson Hauser product and the features and benefits of a product. Um, I, I, I think it would be better to talk about what are the challenges of measuring steam in a system and, and what are the, some, of, some of the false assumptions that have been made over the years by people measuring steam and what are the cool things that we can do, right? We talked about the did you know. You know, Anderson Hauser's product line is so wide so deep that sometimes it's a challenge when you go to meet somebody, as you know, because they'll say to you, Bill, I know Anderson Hauser is a Coriolis flow meter manufacturer. Well, yeah, we do. And we are a Coriolis flow manufacturer, but we also make Vortex. We also make DP. We also make ultrasonic. We also make electromagnetic and an and an end. Yeah. So there, there's a lot there. So I figured if we just narrowed it down for the sake of this conversation to measuring steam, that that might be something um, that your audience finds useful. So that was the thought for this particular get together here. Cool. So I guess I'll start by talking about, you know, we measure steam at Anderson Hauser using our Vortex shedding flow meter, the F200. And it's a, it's a pretty neat device because, now I'm gonna challenge you, Bill. What's the number one flow measurement technology that we see out in the field? Orifice plates. Orifice plates, differential. <laughs> Attaboy. So one of the challenges people have is they're hesitant to make a change from using DP because they know it. It's ubiquitous. It's everywhere. Yeah. Um, and they go, well, why would I why would I do that? I can just take another multi variable pressure differential pressure transmitter and pop it in here and away I go. Well, the good news for our customers is with the F200 vortex shedding flow meter, it's a two wire technology. So you don't have to run new wiring out into the field to put in a technology that increases the turn down of what you're measuring from four to one to anywhere from 20 to one to 40 to one, depending on the instance and the situation. So that's a real unique advantage of going to the F200 is installation costs and not running wire. So you know, there's a couple of things, other things I'd like to talk about here specific to measuring steam because they're very important. And the first one is process safety. First and foremost, there's a lot of things that go on in the steam system that, that can cause hazards in the field. Um, we talked about the wiring. Um, we want to talk about the accuracy of, actual, of, of measuring your steam, right? What goes into that? Um, and we want to talk about, obviously, the the... I buy a device, it goes into the field, then what? Because a lot of times in our world, when somebody buys a steam flow meter, it is to bill somebody else for the usage of that steam, right? Whether it's a big district heating application in a city, you know, like New York City, Boston, Hartford, where they're sending steam to the individual buildings and they have to bill for it. U universities, right? I mean, yep, universities, even in. You know, the life science industry where you go on a big campus, the power plant, the powerhouse is, has to account money for the steam usage at the individual buildings. So we need to take that into account as well. So one of the biggest challenges when we talk about measuring steam and the most common mistake that people make when they measure steam is they don't understand that they don't really have saturated steam in their steam loop, mm -hmm. okay? You ask somebody this, what kind of steam do you have? I got saturated steam. Well, do they? 
And the, the reason I make that statement is the only places where they truly may have saturated steam is either leaving the boiler at the main steam stop valve or when you get to a building, let's say, and you're reducing the pressure at a PRV station where you're dropping the steam pressure down below, or, uh, or I should say, you're, you're dropping the pressure, but you're not losing the temperature and coming out of that PRV, you now have sat, uh, superheated steam or saturated steam, depending on where it is, what the pressure and temperature is. So we have a lot of customers out there who assume that they're measuring 100% saturated steam and 99% of the time they're not. They're measuring wet steam because as steam travels down the pipeline, it's losing temperature and phase change is occurring where it's going from a gas phase to a liquid phase. Now, the further it travels, the more heat it loses and the less actual gas you have in that line and the more water that you have in line. And, and what do we do to typically mitigate that in, in industry? We install steam traps, right? Yeah. Every 100 to 160 feet, we're supposed to put a steam trap to get rid of that condensate that's running along the bottom of the pipe. Um, Assuming that steam trap is sized correctly, dot, dot, dot. Go ahead. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's all that, right? Is it sized correctly? Is, yeah. it, uh, is, is the steam trap plugged? Um, is, is the piping design correct? Is there a strainer that's in there? If they have a strainer, how often do they blow that strainer down? Do they go out there every month and blow it down like the old timers used to do? Or does it sit out there for six months before somebody finally goes and puts a hand on it and goes, whew, everything's cold over here. I better blow down the strainer. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a, 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 a real challenge. So when we talk about measuring steam, you, you've got to account for that. And this takes us back to the fundamental laws of physics, right? I don't make this stuff up. This, these are fundamental laws. You know, uh, those of you who are engineers, you have thermodynamics and you learn that mass can't be produced and it can't be destroyed. Mass is always conserved, right? And then you have the, the law of conservation of energy that states that energy can change in form, but it cannot be created or destroyed. So as the steam is moving and it's losing its temperature and it's changing phase, all sorts of things are happening, right? There's a lot going, there's a lot of science and physics going on there. And here's the problem. Today and always in the steam measurement world, when you're measuring flow, everybody has assumed I've got saturated steam in that pipe when they really don't have saturated steam. They have wet steam, right? Yes. Everybody's got hopefully robust trapping programs where they're testing to make sure that their steam traps are operating efficiently and getting rid of all that condensate. But we find out just about every year around this time, right, the end of September, everybody's turning on their steam around October 15th. They got to get ready for the heating season. Now they find out that if they're smart, they go out and test those traps and they're finding out, oh, no, we've got a lot of traps not working. So it, it's one of the challenges there. Um, Anderson Hauser does something very unique in our vortex shedding flow meter. And we're the only one who does this. And that is we measure the dryness fraction of the steam. Over time, Anderson Hauser said, man, we're selling a lot of steam flow meters where everybody's assuming saturation or superheat and they really don't have it. So how do we measure that? Anderson Hauser went out and built a multi-million dollar facility to generate steam, all sorts of different kinds of steam, saturated steam, wet steam, superheated steam, test, 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 test. How do we measure it? And over time, they figured out how to do it. And today, we measure the dryness fraction. And again, why is this so important? There's a lot of packaged boiler people out there, people who may manufacture boilers out of the factory into the plant that can only put out, at best, 97% dryness fraction of steam. That means, that means coming out of the boiler, there's already 3% liquid content in the steam. And that's before it starts to travel down the pipe. Mm -hmm. So people need to take that dryness fraction into account because when we measure dryness fraction and we correct for it, as well as correcting for temperature and pressure, then we truly know the amount of steam, right? If we're gonna actually measure the mass or energy, we've got to measure the pressure, we've got to measure the temperature, We've got to do the density compensation for the steam volume, right? 
-hmm. And we have to measure the dryness fraction. And that's the only way to truly know what that steam quality is. And Anderson Hauser does that. Okay, we measure it from 80% to 100%. And when you get below 80%, what we're going to do is and we can set an alarm anywhere or an alert to tell you, because a lot of people when you're a steam trap guy, you guys have TLV. A lot of people will tell you that they try to maintain their system at 92% dryness fraction or better, right? Well, would it be helpful for you to know that you just dropped below 92%? I think based on the fact that a lot of maintenance managers tell us that, that that's a good value for them, we can output that from the Anderson Hauser flow meter to let them know where they are in that dryness fraction scale. And then when they drop below 92% to alarm to let them know there's something going on here. And of course, if you've got a one meter here and one meter there, if this one is good and this one's not, you know that something in between those two meters is causing some problems in your system, whether it's a steam trap, a plug strain, or whatever. But you can go out and now look at it, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what we talk about when we talk about dryness fraction. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, oh. that was actually very good. Okay, good. So what does this mean to somebody? Again, without getting into product, um, let's talk about safety, because safety is a big one. You know, big cities have these loops that go out into the street and they're miles long. Stuff happens, meaning we talked about plugged steam traps. This isn't something that Craig Cummings made up. This is something that really happens. And in, in 2007, there was an incident in a major city on the East Coast here where some poor young man was driving his tow truck down the road outside the largest train station that we have in this city. And there was a quote, steam explosion. The steam explosion was caused by water hammer. The water hammer was caused by the plug steam traps, water backing up, steam coming down the line. It takes that water that's backed up and it moves it sometimes as much as mock velocity and a whole bunch of pressure and it hits an elbow and blows it apart or it hits a strainer and the bottom of the strainer blows out and what happens you get a steam explosion and then you get things like what happened there what happened in the Flatiron district of, of manhattan two years ago where they had to evacuate 41 buildings where you've got like an incident like gramercy park in new york city where they had asbestos all over the buildings and the local utility had all sorts of lawsuits on their hands. So the safety factor is very important, um, you know, not to be morbid, but when I was a young man in this industry, one of the first sales calls I ever made was at a major campus in New York State where we were talking to them about thermostatic steam traps and the gentleman I was speaking to was lamenting about two of his colleagues who had passed away in a pit working on something when an elbow blew out while they were in the pit and they they were killed because of, again, water hammer at an elbow. So that's pretty, not pretty important. That's very important. Another thing I want to mention, because the density compensation is so important and knowing where you are is an incident I was involved with. This happened in New York City where the base building had bought an Anderson Hauser flow meter that only had a temperature sensor on it. So they set the meter up to assume the saturated steam value based on the temperature that they were seeing in that flow meter. They had bought the meter from a catalog company. So it shipped in, the base building caused, called me, they said, Craig, we have a problem. We're measuring steam. Our uh, customer is telling us that there's no way that they're using that much steam because they've only got a kettle, uh, a dishwasher, and a chiller. They can't be using that much steam, yet we're charging them every month and we're, they're threatening to sue us. Can you come take a look at this? So when I came to take a look at it, what I came to find out is that the steam flow meter was installed downstream of a PRV, pressure reducing valve. Yeah. Okay, so they were buying Con Edison steam, bringing it into building, dropping the pressure, and they were seeing anywhere from 292 degrees to 350 degrees, and then assuming that they had saturated steam based on that value, okay? Steam, yeah. So saturated steam at 292 degrees is around 44 PSIG and has a specific volume of 7.25 cubic feet per pound, okay? The reality is at some times they were seeing 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which the actual pressure 
that they were seeing from the PRV, the gauge was right there, yeah. was 8 PSIG. So they had 350F at 8 PSIG, which has a specific volume of 21 cubic feet per pound. So that's a factor of almost three, wow. right? Delta. Most steam flow meters don't do that. So the fact that we can do that in the F200 enables customers to get away from those billing wars because you're measuring in our meter pressure, you're measuring temperature, and you're measuring the dryness fraction so that you can do an actual mass balance of the system. Nobody else can do that. It's a very unique offering from Anderson Hauser. Another neat thing that we bring to the table is, and you and Trent are experts at this now, and that is heartbeat technology, right? Oh, yeah, man. Yep. <clears throat> Why is that important? That's important. We thought it was really cool back in the day when Anderson Hauser had their field check because we could sell a steam flow meter and we could send a field service technician out to check the health of that meter annually, right? That way the customer didn't have to pull the meter out of line and send it out for, to Anderson Hauser to have it calibrated. They could leave it in line, do a heart, do a uh, field check on it, yeah. see that the health of the meter was good, and then they could keep it in line and have intelligent conversations with their customers instead of arguing, right? With heartbeat technology, as you know, because you've presented it several times now, yeah. you don't have to shut down the system. You right. don't need an external device and you don't need a field service engineer to come in to do it. You can do it yourself and you can check it as often as you want without shutting down your system. Yeah. So if you've got a custody transfer situation going on, that gives you incredible peace of mind. And it's it's also traceable as well as third party uh, attested back to Tuv. So you've got something that it's traceable. The, 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 the argument goes away. So it's a really neat offering that we bring to the table so that customers and sellers can have good conversations. So I guess in conclusion, what I'll say is that the ENH F200 Vortex meter, it's the only flow meter on the market <laughs> that enables customers to measure the real steam and energy flowing in their system versus making assumptions and operating in a theoretical world. Because everybody's been operating in a theoretical world for a really long time. And we've enabled that to go away. Craig, thanks. That dude, that was that was a, that was that was awesome. Thank you very much for sharing that with us uh, to the audience. Um, I I actually learned a couple of things as well. Thank you. And uh, hey, folks, thanks for. <clears throat> I want to thank Craig Cummins for coming on my podcast today. Um, You're welcome, Bill. <laughs> thank you so much. I know, I know you had fun, and I did too. And uh, hey. Um, you have, a, you have a challenge with steam flow measurement folks out there, give us a call at Easter Controls. We'd be happy to have a conversation. And once again, thank you, Craig Cummins. That's a wrap, and we'll see you again next time. Take care. Take care, Bill. Thank you.